Welcome, hello, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, it's Craft Along. So you're joining Crafters TV today. Hello if you're brand new. I'm Leanne Chivers and I'll be with you for the next couple of hours. I've been here with Crafters Companion for a long time. Um, I'm not alone today. I'm joined by Jan. Hello, Jan. Hello. How oh, are you? I've been with, oh, I'm just coming up, would you believe, just coming up on six years, Leanne, with, oh. uh, with Crafters uh, Companion. Wow. Which is quite staggering, really. Yeah, it's gone very, very quest. I did two years at our store in Chesterfield, and then this has been by the end of my fourth year as a TV demonstrator. So, yeah, wow. still where loving that every time minute gone? of it, but I do not know where those six years it went. It doesn't feel like six years, Just Jan. disappeared, yes. Yes, yeah. yeah, so loving it's to be back today. Good. And one of my favourite shows, I must admit. Oh, good. Um, 13 years for me, Jan, in oh, January. I know. It's a long know. time, isn't it? It's a long time. Um, craft Along. If you don't know what a Craft Along is, it's the time of the week when we kick back, we relax, we do a single project from beginning to end. We don't have any pre-prepared stages. You watch us do the whole thing live and you can craft along with us at home. And we will always, or we try to have one of you as our guest, which is really exciting. We have got Christine Mahoney with us again today and Christine's in upstate New York. We'll chat to Christine in a minute. However, if you would like to join in, if you're sat at home and you're thinking, I want to be on a craft along, then this is how you get to be on a craft along. We're putting the contact details on the bottom of the screen for you there. And that is Crafters TV guest at Crafters Companion. .co.uk and if you email that address then you can be in on the act and maybe you could join us on one of these craft alongs now um, Jan would you like to show us what we're going to be doing I certainly would yeah we're going to make a gorgeous little gift box using those beautiful heritage dies that we previewed earlier if you were with us during wake up call I did a couple of demos with these earlier but we're going to have a look at them again and use them as that focal point for the top of our little gift box so a nice little simple six by six well just under six by six gift box and we've got a little tiny bit of shaker element in the middle there using that gorgeous chunky glitter again that we've got on the show so uh, yeah shall we have a look at what we need for it yeah, and then not? people Let's if they're that. not quite ready they can just gather everything yeah. together so as far as the dies are concerned I have been very naughty because I used a mixture of the dies we've actually mixed and matched them so out of the set in total we're going to use the antique chic we're going to use beautiful baroque the Georgian swirls and the Venetian charm mm -hmm. so a mixture of all four of those dies and then I've popped some extra dies on which were the embellishments on the box so if you want to add embellishments we're going to be using things like the um, the magnificent butterflies we've got some of the sprigs on there from the um, the outline dies we've got um, let's have a little look the enchanted dreams beautiful blue blossom die if you want to pop the little foam flower on and of course that chunky glitter from that collection and then I also use but I'm going to do it slightly differently on the uh, the new one the with love from our Gemini mini die collection so that's all sort of the metal work that you will need if you want to do the whole project if you're just wanting to make the box and decorate the box then it's just those heritage dies and then of course all the additional bits and pieces to help us out we're going to use if you were lucky enough to get those last ones earlier that beautiful beginnings of spring 12 by 12 paper pad with along with its matching pearlescent cardstock we're going to need to use elements from both of those you will need two sheets of a3 centura pearl now i chose the hint of gold but whichever one you have handy piece of acetate and it only needs to be a small piece to go in the center of the design and then i've popped down the flower forming foam with some metallic stamens um, Plum Jam ink was on the original one. Uh, I think I'm going to swap the ink out a little bit. I'm not sure yet. And then your usual, what I call your basic toolkit. So we've got the adhesives in there, your all purpose, your tacky glue, we've got the red liner tape, we've got the foam tape, the hot glue gun. You will need a die cutting machine that's suitable size to fit those dies through. I've got my large Gemini out here. And we're going to need scoreboard and guillotine, scissors, pokey tool, you know, all the usual stuff now that become part of that uh, basic toolkit 
If you're going to make the flour, you'll perhaps need access to the um, iron if you have one handy. And then obviously the flour forming tools, the, the shaping tools and the foam mat. So yeah, all of those bits and pieces we're going to use in conjunction with each other. Um, a lot of that was for the embellishment. So I'm just conscious that if you don't have all those extra peripheral bits, don't worry. It is mainly those heritage dies that we're going to focus on for the main part of the, uh, the construction. Thank you, Jan. I'm really excited to see that come together. I have to say it looks really pretty and I haven't seen a shaker used in the middle of those heritage dies before. So it'll be nice to see that on a box top. Now, we're not alone. We've got Christine Mahoney with us on this craft along. Christine, hello. How are you? I am great. How are you again? <laughs> I know it's so nice to see you. We're like number 47 buses, Christine. You don't <laughs> see us for ages and then three of us come along at once. Um, it's really lovely to have you here. I've been very much looking forward to spending time with you this two hours. Uh, how much do you love the Heritage Dyes, Christine? I just got on Saturday. So I, oh. this is my first time playing with them today. I just did something a second ago that is the same as this. I'll show you guys later. Oh. Um, and then now I'm ready to do it again. <laughs> oh, fantastic. Great. So that's actually great because it's something new for you as well, which is exciting. That's good. Thank you, Christine. Now, I can see you when Jan's crafting and we're watching Jan. We've got another screen in the studio that I can see you on. So if at any point you need to ask a question or you get stuck or you haven't quite understand, <laughs> if you wave, I'll know you need to talk to someone. We'll stop and we'll come back to you. But we'll check in with you lots during the show. <laughs> yes, woo, it's me. Um, and I'll see you waving and we'll come back to you. We will be checking in with you lots, Christine. So um, I'll speak to you in a few minutes' time. Uh, enjoy and let us know if you've got any questions. Okay, so um, look, we've got, but well, this is what we're going to be using, these fabulous heritage dies. And we have got them on the show for you today. You have got a saving and it's a 25% saving you've got. You're going to get all four sets of these uh, and you're going to get 29 dies in total, which is absolutely fantastic. Is it four or is it six? I think it's six. six. Hang on, I need to count them. I think there's six. I'm counting six. You're getting all six sets of these 29 dies in total. Plus, you're going to get some cardstock and um, some paper, which I'll talk to you about in a second. These dies, the concept is that they're a flat set of nesting dies and they will all nest inside of each other beautifully, which you can see here. So if you cut the dies and then just put the pieces as they come out of the die, this is what they look like. But actually the concept of these is for them to be re rotated at 45 degrees and laid up on top of each other. And the difference and the intricacy and height that you get in that is truly fabulous. It, it's meant to mimic the beautiful ornate ceiling roses of... Um, really old stately homes and houses it looks like a completely different die doesn't it when doesn't you look it? at those two images you wouldn't believe that they've been cut from the same metal you work. wouldn't would you they look like two completely different things it's just by twisting like magic, just yeah. by the twist just by that twist absolutely, yeah beautiful Jan. absolutely so uh, every single one of the sets you can see has that concept so your first set you're looking at there is georgian swirls and then the second set that you've got, I love that one, is beautiful Baroque. Look at the difference between the two Gorgeous. and how it really yeah. does build up. It's fabulous. Then you've got your heritage scrolls. Then we've got our Venetian charm. Then we've got Edwardian elegance. Finally, antique chic which I love that little heart nesting die in the centre of there. So you're getting all six of them, plus you're getting a pack of your card from the uh, Vintage Butterflies collection, our Sarah's signature, and you're getting a whole 12 by 12 pad, you can see here, which is our garden gnomes, and there's 36 sheets in there. So all six die sets, a whole pack of card, and a whole 12 by 12 paper pad. Your platinum price is on the screen at 62.35 or 71.76. Okay, so craft alongs, they're about crafting, so let's get crafting along. Over to you, Jan. Right, so I've got my two pieces of that gorgeous, I love this cardstock, Centura Pearl there. If we just have a quick, we've got to appreciate just before we get started, just get that shimmer on there. Can we pick it? There it is, look. 
absolutely gorgeous now as i say i went for the hint of gold but if you have hint of silver obviously the color mm. is irrelevant so Scram i chose shopper. that scrap shopper jan she says i've actually got everything to craft along today absolutely perfect oh, i feel like celebrating <gasps> for it yep because like as i say i've said you know you can you can swap things yeah. out for these craft alongs it doesn't have to be the exact no. menu that we give you but if you've got everything <gasps> we're on a winner there aren't we so yeah i chose the a3 because we're going to start with two pieces of a and three quarter squares for our box now that's slightly larger than the a4 here in the uk and in the state so that's why i went for the larger pieces and then i've taken my two paper pads um, the cardstock pad the pearlescent card and the pearlescent paper in this one and i've chosen i'm going to make it in a slightly different colorway for you just to show you we were talking earlier about how something can look very different when it's done in a different color so the one that i've mocked up here we've actually used that beautiful shade let me just find the plain one first the beautiful pink out of here you can see that gorgeous pink for the mats and layers that one actually in conjunction with the pale pink and then we chose one of the pink papers now what I'm actually going to do for making it up today in exactly the same way is I've chosen this particular one which has got those greens and lilacs in so I've actually picked the pattern uh, the plain card in the green and lilac to match so we're going to do exactly the same project but in a different colourway, Leanne. Thank you, yeah. Jan. And just to let everybody know, that bundle did sell out this morning on Wake Up Call. However, the pad, the paper pad, is available on its own. It's not in the bundle with the matching pellets and cardstock, but if you do really love those pellets and papers Jan was showing you there, please go and have a look on our website. Put in that name of the pad. Um, and it's, what was it called? Beginning of Spring. Type that into the search bar and um, you'll be able to find that lovely pad there if you would like it thanks jan right so we're going to start i always start i'm very methodical with anything like this i always start and i'm saying when i'm at home i don't know about you leanne when you're crafting always do the, the guillotine work first get the paper cut up and get it to one side and then we'll do the die cutting element yeah. so i've taken my large guillotine because we're working with the larger cardstock and we do need to just extend that measuring arm so make sure that's straight and don't forget to pop that little leg down so that you've got a nice straight piece here to work with and then we're going to take that a3 cardstock pop it in long ways there so I've got the length of my card into the guillotine and I'm just going to take that to eight and three quarter inches on my guillotine there so make sure that it's nice and straight along that top edge if you work on the top edge. I know some people prefer to work with it down here, but you've not got the extension arm at the bottom. So I tend to go for the top edge of the guillotine there, get it set at the eight and three quarters. And we're going to do a nice clean cut. And I love that noise. I'm addicted to this. Love it. It's lovely, isn't it? And then rotate it. And we're going to make it eight and three quarters the other way. So you want a square of the Centura card at eight and three quarter inches, okay? And then I'm gonna do exactly the same with the second piece. Of course, if it's a box, we need a piece for the base and a piece for the lid that measure exactly the same. So eight and three quarter inches along that long side and then rotate an eight and three quarter inches along the other side. So Jan, just a top tip from me. Um, if you haven't got A3 card stock at home, your eight and three quarters could come from a sheet of A4. Because it's, isn't it eight and three quarters wide, A4? No, it's only eight and a quarter. Is it eight and a quarter? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Christine's done it. It's eight yes, and a yes. half, isn't it, in the States? It's eight and so and they half might in just the get States. away with it at eight and a half inches square in yeah. the States, yeah. So I'm going to pop the score lines into the cardstock and then we'll cut the paper to match. Yeah. So and this is the beauty. And again, you know, I know I'm always talking about this, but it just makes life so simple. On our scoreboards, we've got measurements for the box lid on the left hand mm. side and measurements for the box base on the right hand side. Now, it does say that at the bottom of the board, but I always remember left for lid. OK, so we're going to take one of our pieces of cardstock all right pop it up against that left hand side so that it's nice and snug and then at one and a quarter inches across the top markings mm -hmm. so one and two extra marks for the quarter we're just going to do a gentle score line 
and I always prefer to do a couple of gentle ones rather than one deep one so that you don't damage your cardstock. We're going to do that on all four sides. So just keep rotating your card to that left hand side at one and a quarter inches and that's going to be the depth of our box. So all four sides are the same at one and a quarter. And then on there, just in one of the corners, I'm going to pop an L for lid so that I don't get these mixed up because they look very similar when they're scored. OK, so I just pick up those score lines in there now mm -hmm. and then we're going to do the base. We're going to do exactly the same, but we're going to work on this right hand side now. So again, you want to be looking at the measurements that are on the bottom of the scoreboard this time. So I normally find the track that is one and a quarter inches and then I take it up to the top and I usually work from there. So from following it from bottom to top, it's actually come up to the seven inch marker at the top. So I know that I'm safe now to run down that seven inch and do that same score line this time on all four sides. All right, now if you prefer to work up from the bottom, you can come this way and score upwards. I just prefer to go down. Mm, so too. I normally track where it lands at the top and then use that track there to add those score lines, just turning it, making sure it's really make sure that it's nice and straight here because that helps to that finished design. It makes everything nice and uh, fit nicely at the end when we have finished. So again, just pop it up to that edge into your track, couple of gentle lines with pressure. And then on that one, I'm just going to pop my B for base. So that's our two pieces for the box itself. All right. We're going to have just a little pause there, Leanne, just mm -hmm. to make sure everybody's in the same frame and then we're going to cut into the papers okay, as well. Okay, let's yeah? check in with... Um, oh, Christine's popped off somewhere. <laughs> so, uh, she's, well, oh, mate, it could be, it could be a delivery. It could be a delivery, you know, it could be anything. Let's catch up with all of you at home and see what you've got to say. I'm sure she'll be back in a second. Um, a dog's barking. I think it's a delivery. Um, Maybe. Well, hey, she's back. She's here. <laughs> she's back. Christina's back. Don't you worry, Christina. We were just thinking maybe you were getting a delivery. <laughs> oh, it's a stupid dog barking. I wanted to get um, uh, a ink pad to match my... Oh, mine. OK. And let, so tell us, what's your dog's name, Christine? Panda. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, Oliver. He's a... Uh, um, West Highland Terrier, and normally my oh, son has Oh, a little Westy. Uh, Oliver the West Highland Terrier. He sounds like a happy chap, Christine. Sounds like? A happy chap. Happy. Trouble? Yeah. Happy. I don't know what happy. Talking, um, he's annoying. <laughs> <laughs> and I wanted to go in my craft room, but it's so cold in there. I had to be out here, and my son's working so sorry he's gonna stop uh, don't you worry how are <laughs> how, are, how are you doing with the craft along did you manage to keep up with Jan oh yeah no I got the base and the top done already and I just had to get ink for the colors I picked out so we're all good Okay, right, we'll come back to you in a second, Christine. Thank you. Let's go and have a look at some of the comments and see what you're saying. Let's see if you're all keeping up at home. Um, okay, so we've got, oh, oh so many of you. Barbara Rastovsky um, is with us. Hello, Barbara. Lynn Blackledge, uh, afternoon from a dry for a change, Isle of Wight. Hello to you. Jeffrey Langley says, good day, Leanne and Jan and all the superstar CTV crew. Um, we've got Jo, Ho jo Holzer. Uh, hello, everyone. So happy to see Craft Along with Jan. She's the best teacher. Oh, thank you, thank Jo. You. I'm sure Jan really Bless appreciates them, that. Honestly. Um, Karen says, oh, I have the guillotine for a couple of years. Never knew there was a little leg. Just looked and proof, there it is. Didn't know how I missed that. That's fantastic. She didn't know there was a little there leg, There you go. Jan. You see, as I you said, see, every, every day see. is a school day. Um, so Anne Kalanuska says, if you don't have A3, you can use 12 by 12. Yes, yes of you course. Can. Yes, you can. And actually, guys, you could, let's say it's in the UK and it's eight and a quarter, or let's say it's eight and a half in the US, you could just cut it to that measurement and still do the one and, uh, was it one and a quarter One and a quarter, So yeah. one and a quarter depth. Your box would just be a little bit little smaller, bit smaller that's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it won't change how you do the project. If you don't have your A3 card available, use the size of card you've got. Still do that depth of box that Jan told you about. Your box will just be a tiny bit shorter. You'll follow the instructions exactly as they are. 
Are you okay, Jan? To start I'm the good next to go. Piece? Yeah, Thank good to you. go. So what I've done then is I've chosen one of the colour card stock the plain pearlescent card was going to be my matte layer for the pattern now I love these sort of elements of the lilac in the paper so I've chose the lilac layer to be the matte layer and then I've brought in one of the green ones again to pick out that green to use with the dies when we get going to layer those dies up so decide which one's going to be your matte layer and we're going to cut into that one first and we're going to make a square mat to go on the top of the box along with four pieces to go around the edge of the box so your box if you're following my measurements if you take your lid piece we should have a six and a quarter inch square in the center of the score lines here so I'm going to leave that quarter of an inch and I'm going to cut my mat layer at six inches so again I don't need the extending arm out for this one because my six inches is already here on the um, the guillotine so again pop this in line it up at the six inch mark make sure that it's nice and flush against the top here and then use the vertical lines here to make sure that it's straight all the way down and that's the best tip I can give you I get a lot of people messaging saying my, my guillotine work always goes wonky use that grid on there to get it nice and straight and make yourselves a nice cut and then we're going to rotate and do it six inches in the other direction so we've got a nice six inch square there that's going to mat and by mat i just mean the first layer of our cardstock is going to fit nicely with just a little eighth of an inch border all the way around the top of the box number one and then we need to create these side pieces now they're going to be the same length so we're going to stick with the six inches which is the piece i've got left and remember we measured at one and a quarter inches so again i usually work in quarter of an inch increments. so we're going to come down to an inch so I know that I've already got my six inches here because this started out as a 12 by 12 piece and we've cut it down to six inches. So all I'm going to do is cut it at four inches now across that width. I'm going to pop the spare to one side because we're going to need some of that to die cut. And then I'm just going to make this into four one inch strips. So I'm going to move it down to the three, which effectively is going to chop me an inch off that side. I'm going to move it down to the two and it saves you just taking the card in and out of your guillotine then chop the next inch off and move it down to the one use those vertical lines again to make sure it's as straight as you can get it and then chop that last one whoops this is jan being very pedantic about it there we go use that finger guard to hold everything in place and you should end up then with four nice equal one inch pieces so those are going to be our layers that fit around the edge of the box here. And then we're going to do the layer that goes on top of that, which is going to be out of your pattern paper. So again, have a look at your design. Do you want to use the planar side? Do you want to use the pattern side? Why wouldn't you want to use the pattern side? And I, although a lot of this is going to be covered up, I like this area here, but I also like the bottom bit. So again, think about where you want to cut the square that's going to layer onto top of here so this was six inches we're coming down that quarter of an inch so we're going to work at five and three quarters this time so again i'm just going to make sure everything's lined up nicely again i'm going to make sure i'm watching that vertical line hold it in place with the finger guard nice straight cut and i want this bottom corner here so i'm just going to take it and pop it back through the guillotine at five and three quarters and make myself that layer hold it in place nice clean cut and then that's going to be your layer to go on top of the mat and that's going to be the basis of our box that we're then going to build those beautiful heritage dies on top and then the piece that's left again is just the right width now so make sure you've got your five and a quarter width the right way uh, so, sorry five and three quarters it's going to measure five and three quarters but it's going to be wider the other way all right so make sure you've got the right one you want your five and three quarter width to be your vertical okay now these were an inch wide so we now need a three quarter inch piece to fit on the mat layer okay so what i'm going to do is i know that two three quarters is one and a half and i know that two one and a halves is three so I'm going to cut it at three inches to start with. And I'm not too worried which part of the paper 
I'm using there. Pop all the scraps to one side and then come down three quarters of an inch increments. I find it easier than trying to line up the three quarters of an inch is just off the edge of the, um, the, the guide here at the top. So I'm going to come down three quarters of an inch, which will take it to two and a quarter. And I now know that this piece that I've taken off the edge is going to be just the right width to mat and layer onto my first piece. OK, and then we're going to come down three quarters of an inch again. So that's going to take it to one and a half. OK. And I've got my second one. Now, technically, this has just gone off the edge of the, um, the measuring guide, but I can just roughly work out where it needs to be. I'm just eyeballing about halfway from that piece so that I get about a half of it. If you're not sure about doing it that way, use your piece that's left. Have a look what this one measures. So I've got, if I take this down to three inches, I can then do my three quarters of an inch by taking it off that total. Does that make sense? That's what I would do, Jan. Yeah. It gets a little bit tricky when you've just got that narrow mm -hmm. piece left and we've not got the measurements there. Yeah. You can eyeball it, but as I say, work with a bigger piece and then you know that you're getting yeah. the right size strip then that's just going to fit that's what I would perfectly. Do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's our matting and layering for the actual box lid itself. Okay, so I'm going to pop the guillotine to one side for a second. All right, and what we will do is get some of this stuck together so that it's not just hanging around and then we'll do the die cutting work. So again, do we need a little break just to make sure everybody's at the same place, yeah, Leanne? Yeah, we can do that for so you. So you should see. end up with four pieces that are six inches by one and a, one inch. Mm -hmm. And then you should end up with four strips of your pattern paper. She says, where's my other one gone? I did have four. What have I done with it? <laughs> I'll find it in a second. You, but you should end up with four pieces that are five and three quarter inches by and a three quarter pounds. inch. Lovely. Thank you, Jan. I did have another one. Um, let me check in with Christine. Christine, how are you doing? Um, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> oh, good for you. Super. Oh, I like those colours, I'm colors, loving Christine. the colour scheme, Christine. Which pad yeah, is that from? I, <laughs> I, um, this is from the, the newest... Uh, it's... Um, the Sate with Flowers. <gasps> it's my favourite, Christine. Mmm, mine too. One of. <laughs> I love the Sate with Flowers pad. It really, it, we had it yesterday with Debbie and it's, oh my word, it's scrumptious. I love those colours, thank you. And, and um, Oliver's uh, quieting uh, down now. Sorry. Oliver's um, quieting did, down um, now. The eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter for the two card stacks and only um, put in an inch for scoring. Okay, yep. that's fine. And then I put everything else up from that. Okay, as long as you end up with a box, Christine, that's everything. all that matters, as long as you end up with a box. We'll be back with you soon, Christine. Thank you. Right. thanks. Now, we've got some really great cardstock pads for you. If you're loving what you're seeing from our Jan so far, why would you not? It really is starting to come together beautifully. I love it. It looks so pretty, especially the matte and around the outside. We've got some great pads, which would be good for you here. Um, and you've got a 20% saving on these. So you can see you've got your platinum price there, 41.58 or 50.38. And the first pad I've got for you is one of these fabulous luxury pads with the 12-inch double-sided pearlescent cardstock in here so you've got your gray pearlescent double-sided and then you've got your silver luxury glitter to go with it and the whole pad is the gray pearlescent and silver luxury glitter glitter so you've got 12 of your double-sided pearlescent and 12 of your luxury glitter in there 24 piece pad that's in the bundle We've then got, I adore these, I think we need to do some more of these actually in some different colours uh, because I just think it's so lovely to have your 12 inch pearlescent cardstock in here. You can see that lovely shine on there, look gorgeous. how fabulous like that is. It's like buttercup colour isn't it? It's, it is like buttercup, just, it's gorgeous. Just rich isn't it, lovely. It's a nice yellow, there's yes, some horrible yellow. I don't like the citrusy yellows personally no. but I love that shade. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. And then to match the pearlescent you've got a beautiful lemon linen oh. to go with. So in all of the colours you've got your pearlescent, there's the beautiful blue pearlescent and then you've got your lovely blue linen and the matching yeah is Gorgeous perfect shades. all the way through yep. so we've really taken time to make sure that you've got the lovely pearlescent oh. 
which is absolutely beautiful and then taking lots of time to make sure that the linen perfectly matches and coordinates with that pearlescence so for matting and layering and projects where you want Perfect. two different textures of cardstock but in a similar color family this pad will do it for you 24 pieces in there and then we've got our gnomes our garden gnomes for you again the paper pad you've got those beautiful scenes and actually they would be great as a square on a box top with some little images on. Funnily enough, Leanne, I've got a masterclass tomorrow. I'm here for two days this week and I've got a masterclass with this collection tomorrow. We're going to be using some of those to create the cards great. with. So, yeah, that's at 2 p.m. tomorrow afternoon if oh. anybody's free to watch. So, yeah, coming Definitely. up. Definitely. Okay, so I love that. So that's 2 p.m. GMT and it's 9 a.m. Eastern time and 6 a.m. Pacific time for our Jan doing that first tomorrow. 1st of December. Goodness me. <gasps> oh, 1st <laughs> of December. Where's the year gone? It'll be oh. a Pinching a punch for the first of the month tomorrow, Jan. Uh, beautiful papers I in love here. That one. Lovely little saving for you and a good amount. 120 sheets in total. Um, you get two of these. Oh my word! So you buy them three and you get an extra gnome pad free. Imagine that one. There we go. Wow. Imagine that. Four pads for 40. Yep. That's a tenner, just over a tenner a pad. 11 what 11 or 12 pounds a pad if you're in the uh, dollars a pad if you're in the Giving US them away. that is exceptional value for how money how many sheets of cards is that the 120 sheets that's in total 120 sheets wow that's going to last a while isn't it, it? Is just think how many while. projects you could make and of course if you're wanting to use that 12 by 12 on your cards cutting it into four you've got yeah. four bits of six, four by, six, six by six which is a lovely size for card making it isn't really it? is jan yep. absolutely and the pearlescent in there falls beautifully to make a card base actually yep. um i think now is the time i think in this little run up to christmas we're buying consumables because you know we're crafting we're not necessarily treating ourselves to big new launches so i think it's consumables and little gifts and bargains that we can't miss and i would say that's a consumable bargain that you can't miss with that card pad i really would we're going to give a little break to you all at home so you can make sure that you're all caught up uh, with where our jan is do share in your comments send us some pictures let us know if you're crafting along with us and how you're getting along we'd love to hear from you but um in the meantime we're just going to watch this little video while you can have a little catch up welcome to crafters tv with more than 35 hours of live shows each week it's your home for all things craft. So, join our family of craft experts with live tutorials and demonstrations every day. We shine the spotlight on new and innovative crafting products here on Crafters TV. Get creative and craft along with our amazing deals. Your next craft project is only a click away. Tune in live seven days a week or watch on Catch Up at crafterscompanion.com, Facebook or our YouTube channel. You can chat to us, craft along and meet new friends in our online crafting community. You entertain us, you give us a community to talk, you know, in the chat. That wouldn't happen without you guys. It's like um, Crafters Companion is magical. There's magic here. You all our time with each other! <laughs> You're not free to boot camp. Get off! <laughs> <laughs> There's a show for every type of crafter, from first-time dabblers to full-time makers. So, stop what you're doing and enjoy the fun here on Crafters TV. What makes Crafters TV so special is uh, you guys. It's really special because the the experts are really experts. They're, they're um, really skilled at what they do. And they want to make sure that the audience also improves on their skills. Crafters TV is so special because you've got together a really sort of key group of people um, and people that are very passionate about the product. Crafters TV is so special because it's a unique community that we have with each other where we can learn and grow and communicate with each other. Community, the family spirit, the education, everything to do with craft. We are all like-minded people who share a passion. I love all the inspiration the demonstrators bring and all the knowledge for us out here. What makes Crafters TV so special, 100% is the interaction. No other crafting TV channel or show has the same interaction. I love the community, I love chatting live, uh, I think that's the best part. 
and uh, it's gone beyond crafting because we've become friends. It feels to me to be a really, really close relationship with our customers and viewers. You guys make us feel like we're part of your family. I've never been on the show before, but one of my friends who I did meet from CCTV encouraged me and I was on the craft along. A massive team of people and I think they've all got their role to play uh, and it just brings everything together. It allows us to do our job and just love it. Ah, oh, the people obviously, the people not just here at Crafts Companion, uh, but the viewers that watch us, I mean everybody. We have this real magical essence about it. Bye for now. Bye. I always want to reply with bye when we come to the end of that video. Um, got loads of comments coming in from you and you're all loving this craft along with Jan, which is brilliant. Um, we've got so many of you joining us. I must read out this comment in a two in a second, which I read entirely wrong. And I did have a little chuckle to myself. Uh, Sue McGuire says, I have two Westies, so twice as much barking, especially when I'm speaking to someone or listening to CTV. Um, Rachel says, just joined in my six-month-old cockapoo was going mad at Christine's <laughs> dog. And she's having a good laugh at that. Uh, Charlotte says, afternoon, everyone. I'm a bit late, but I'm looking forward to the craft along. Welcome, Charlotte. Uh, Charlotte adores this paper pad. It is absolutely beautiful. She said she's so glad she got her hands on it. <laughs> you congratulate yourself, Charlotte. Betty says, my smooth fox terrier didn't even wake up when Christine... Now, this is the one I read wrong. <laughs> so I read this from Betty. This is what I read. My smooth fox terrier didn't even wake up when Christine was barking. <laughs> and I thought, Betty! <laughs> Betty! At least Christine's laughing now. I thought, Betty, Christine wasn't barking, it was Oliver. But then, I'm going to look, and that's when you need to read your punctuation, because it says, when Christine's was barking. So that's OK, redeemed. Um, me reading it wrong, Betty. Um, and then she says, no dog here, but it didn't face the baby beside me either. Lana, good morning, everyone from Texas. My Cavalier King Charles is having her morning nap. And uh, Lana says she loves this paper pad and the dyes are beautiful too. Sandra says, Leanne, I'm crafting, but not along. Only four more envelopes to make. Then, then any more cards for this year will be standard size. Good you, good for you, Sandra. I love making my own envelopes, but when it's Christmas cards, oh my word, does it get tedious. And that's when you really appreciate a big old pack of envelopes, isn't it, Sandra? <laughs> that's, where, that's how I think, anyway. Now, look, our Jan was using the scoreboard earlier, the score master, and I thought, we've got a great bundle of this, and it's on a really good price for you. So let's have a look, because you might have a scoreboard, you might be in the market for another one. So we've got a 30% saving. You've got our score master here, which has the tool included. You've got your metric and imperial measurements on both sides. So that's your inches and your centimetres. You're also getting the Envella Box Creator. And the Envella Box creates those lovely, deep, dimensional, thick envelopes for you. So you're getting that. You're getting um, a thin red liner tape to assemble all your Envella Boxes. And you're getting... Wow! You're getting a lot. You're getting our sweet treat board as well, so you can make all of the popcorn boxes and you can make the little uh, picnic cupcake boxes as well. That's in there. And my favourite, my favourite carnival cardstock where you've got your luxury glitter, your matte mirror and your mirror in all of these fabulous carnival colours. So all of that for £24 which is in $32, which is a fantastic saving and a really great price. And actually, if you are still getting the odd gift for people, maybe for new crafters, that's a great little bundle because we all, every single one of us who paper crafts, we have to have a scoreboard. It's the law. You can't be having any cracks in your creases and you need that professional score line for things to go together beautifully. So that would be a great little gift for someone if they're wanting to start on their crafting journey. Jan, are you ready to pick up your next stage? I am, certainly. I love that card pack, Leanne. And it if you've got the masquerade paper pad lying around in your stash, it works beautifully with that paper pad as well. The colours are just sort of like, even though they weren't made at the same yes, time, Jan. they go yeah, together beautifully. Right. right, all I'm going to do now then is we're just going to do a little bit of um, sticking. I want to get these pieces together so that we don't lose them. So I'm literally just going to stick the paper layer 
onto my matte layer which is the pearlescent card and I'm going to go for my tape pen to do this with if you want to use a wet glue then I would be going cardstock to cardstock it's nearly always my all-purpose glue unless I'm sticking to something like glitter card in which case I would I would swap over to the um, the tacky glue so that it soaks in but just for this purpose I'm going to stop pop them over I'm just going to run my tape pen down the edge and flick down the other edge and that's perfect to actually pop these in place and you should find that you've just got a little border all the way around about an eighth of an inch I start at one end that way you can see better there look so just get it in place and when you're happy with that literally run it nice and straight you've got time to just give it a little wriggle and then we're just going to get all those stuck down and I'm going to do the same with that square that we made for the top of the box as well so if you want to do that along with me I don't know if there's anything you want to um, just pick up on Leanne while I do the sticking yeah but course. I'm just going to do the same on all of those pieces so that we've got them all stuck together well, I should only just, be a minute or of course. two let's just have a look at the heritage dies then um, and that gives you a little bit of a chance for everybody to catch up at home as well and we'll catch up with Christine and see how she feels about the fact that I thought she was barking <laughs> sorry Christine um oh, terrible <laughs> she's good thumbs up you're good you've caught up oh she's great she's smiling she's exactly where she needs to be um let's catch up with Christine actually before we have a look at the heritage dies thank you Charlotte appreciate it hi Christine I'm so sorry I'm thinking you were barking <laughs> yeah that was rude oh don't say the word <laughs> I'm saying it loud every time and then it's going to set Oliver off because I'm saying it. <gasps> I promise you I won't, I won't shout no. the W word because if I say the W word, it's all going to kick off, isn't it? W-A-L-K-I-E-S. Walkies. Oh. Walkies. You don't want us to say walkies. I don't, I don't think you know. Can you hear us? <laughs> no. I won't say the word just in case we set them off. <laughs> How are you getting along there, yeah. Christine? Okay. I got this part done. Oh, look at you. You're flying. And I'm, it really works well. I'm ahead a little. <laughs> I love that. Oh, that's great. Thank you, Christine. We're going to have a take another look at these dies and then we'll catch up with Jan and we'll come back to you in a sec. Um, Christine just is flying there. She's like, we need to get her a job on Crafters TV <laughs> USA. Look at her. She's, oh, now she's very excited. Look, she's, she's yes, thumbs up. She's with. She's I want to work there. <laughs> We're going to get her over there. here. She can be a guest demonstrator. I'm sure no, because she's absolutely full flying. time. <laughs> <laughs> I will be back with you in a second, Christine. Right, these heritage dies are really fantastic. Um, look, you're getting all six sets plus your cardstock plus your paper pad and you're getting that for your platinum price of 62.35 or 71.76 we've got all of these beautiful designs in here all designed to rotate 45 degrees so you build up that real heritage ceiling rose feel you've got your antique chic you've got your edwardian elegance you've got your venetian charm you've got your heritage scrolls you've got your beautiful baroque and you've got your Georgian swirls. Absolutely gorgeous, plus your cardstock, plus your paper pad for a fantastic deal there. Jan, are you ready? I am all good, yep, I'm all good. I've got my pieces stuck together. I just wanted to get those all stuck down so that we don't lose any pieces off there. Pop those to one side. I'm gonna come back to the lid and the base that we created now. So wherever you've got a score line on here, we need to fold. Now I always score on the side that I want to fold away from. Again, there's lots of questions about this. I don't think there is a right or wrong. It just makes sense for me to score and start breaking those fibers in the side that you're gonna fold away and you get that beautiful crease line in there. So I've just added my bone folder into the equation. Once I've folded it, make sure it's nice and square and then just give it a burnish with your bone folder we're going to do that on all four sides of the box lid and the box base so again i'm just going to whip round those fold it along the score line and crease it in there with the bone folder and then we're going to do exactly the same with the base so again where the fold where the score line is crease it away from yourself 
burnish it in place you get that lovely crisp edge i mean this is fine you can see there we've still got a really nice crease in there but this is sort of teaching the cardstock where you want it to stay cardstock doesn't have its own memory so we have to sort of teach it what to do and we want it to stay in that lovely nice scored crease there to make that nice right angle when we make our box so just by adding that burnish in it does make a difference i think and then oh, I, I'm 100%. Yeah. I think if you don't burnish, it doesn't look professionally finished. No, it and just it doesn't say, go together it teaches as well. it where to go, doesn't it? And, mm -hmm. and, and helps it to stay in place. Mm -hmm. And then either one of them, I happen to have just got my base here. We're going to take away a little bit of the card. We need to snip into it. I prefer my bigger scissors for this one. And I'm going to look at the square in the corner here and I'm going to come to this side of it and I'm going to work to the left hand side of the score line so I'm actually cutting the score line away and I'm going to stop where those two lines bisect in the corner so you can just see there I've got a nice clean edge here the actual score lines on the tab and then I'm going to wedge into that one which is effectively cutting that score line away now I also like to take a little bit off that top edge as well so I've literally just cut the tiniest little pieces if I can pick them up you can see there just the tiniest little pieces out of it to make that tab all right and we put the details for the scissors which are on a great deal for you along the bottom of the screen there if you'd like the scissors that Jan's using now because this is a square box I'm just going to rotate and I'm going to do the same in each of the four corners if it's a rectangular box mm. I normally make my tabs so that they fold onto the long side to help it reinforce that long side rather than coming onto the short side if it was rectangular but that's just me being a little bit pedantic so again rotation I don't think it's pedantic I think it's an excellent top tip Jan because it's about reinforcing isn't it, it is and just every wherever you can make yeah. it a little bit stronger mm. it just helps so again same principle on all four sides so find out where your score line is come just to the left of it and take away that corner there now if you're left-handed you can work the other way and you can be working on this corner and work in here and do the same on all four sides as long as you do the same thing in the same orientation on all four corners we're good to go so this is my base okay so you can see now if I put that down I pop it on the green you'll be able to see a bit better there that I've got it cut round and I've got that little wedge out of each of the spaces and just off that slight outside edge of the tab to make our glue tabs now again me being a little bit sort of pedantic and a bit picky when we come to the next layer I tend to go the other way because this is going to pop together and I'm going to have that double width of card folding from my corner so what I tend to do is do it the other way when I'm going around with the box lid so what I mean by that is I actually took this side away I'm going to flip it this way and work so that the tabs fold in the other way and again it's, you can do exactly the same this is just jam being a little bit so I get a bit obsessive with things like this so I'm doing the same principle I'm just working on the opposite on the other corners so I'm going round anti-clockwise this time no I'm going round clockwise this time instead of anti-clockwise okay so what will happen is the tabs will go the other way I don't know if it makes a difference or not it's just something I've always done it's I do it like a windmill if I start at one side I follow that side all the way yeah. around and then the tabs tend to fold in a road in a regimented order yeah. inside you don't get a bulk at one side of your box that's what I was trying to avoid yeah mm. so again just taking that nice straight edge which is going to be the edge that we fold up to make the corner and then I just take a little bit off here it helps everything line up when we get to the end so again you can see there we've got the same principle on this one all right so just get rid of all those little pieces out of the way and then i prefer to decorate before i actually put it together so make sure you have the one that's got the l on it for lid and then all i'm going to do now i'm going to hand back to you in a second leanne but i'm just going to add my glue and i'm going to pop these in place on that box lid please make sure it's your lid and not your base because if you end up with it decorated on the base 
the lid's going to go over the top of it and cover it up. So I'm going to carry on with my tape pen and I'm going to pop these in place and then I'm just flick back over to you while I do that, Leanne, because okay. that's fairly that's straightforward. that's absolutely fine. I've got some great stuff to show everybody here. So um, we will have a look at this while you're sticking all your pieces in place yep. and then we'll check back with you, Jan. So we've got a fantastic bundle of our Centura Pearl cardstock here for you, which is um, really great. Again, it's a consumable, it's a stash builder. When you've got it, that's when you really um, want to be getting you know, a good stack of it and it's a 20% saving for you. We'll get those details on the screen for you in a second. But in the meantime, here we go. We, oh my word, come on. We're going to get 100 sheets for £15.20 or $22.40 of Centura Pearl 300 GSM, hint of silver and hint of gold. That is fantastic by anybody's standards. And certainly at this point before Christmas, that's what I'm doing. I'm buying my consumables, especially if I've got a saving. And we've got uh, 15 pence a sheet and a 25% savings. <laughs> it really is great value for money, isn't it? Now, we've got the hint of silver and hint of gold. Now, what I'm going to do is get a hint of the gold and a hint of the silver side by side because I just want to show you the difference. The difference is very subtle, but I think until you see them together, it's difficult to understand the difference. And we've got to rely on our cameras and sometimes it's a little bit bright in here. But can you can see, see it, yeah. how one is much warmer than the other? And you can subtly see that it's got that lovely kind of gold iridescence to it, where the other one is like a bright light. And I liken this to whether you like um, bright LED lights, white Christmas lights, or whether you like the warm white Christmas lights. Because this is what uh, our Centura will do for you. One is a bit warmer, one's a bit cooler. The warm one I use with my warm matting and layering, the cool one I use with my blues and lilacs and things like that. It just really saves the clash. And you've got a really great quality, scores like a dream, cuts like a dream. It really gives just a touch of luxury to your makes. And of course with this, you could be making um, eight by eight uh, sheets to make the box that Jan was making. Make it an inch deep and you've got the same size box but just with an inch depth rather than an inch and a quarter. And it will look absolutely beautiful. I love, I can never have less than two stacks of these at home because I start to twitch because I just like to know that it's always there. So if you would like to do that, get that. Now the other thing that we've seen Jan using is our fantastic set of scissors. And so many of you in Wake Up Call this morning were messaging in to say, I've got them, they're fantastic. I've got 11 pairs. I've got a pair everywhere. I bought them for my daughter. I could never be without them. They're the best scissors I've ever used. So, so many of you. And thank you for sharing that because they are fantastic. One of the things I just want to show you, and Jan mentioned this before, and she's absolutely right. To have a big pair of scissors that cuts right to the end when you snip right to the very end and do that you can see it's yeah. cut right to that point you're not bending the cardstock when you take them out the other great thing for what Jan was just doing there because her box lid was an inch and a quarter yep. you can see here I've got my measurement the ruler is on the blade of the scissor so you can line your card stock up with the inch and a quarter measurement and when you snip right to the edge it will go to the precise place of your score line and make your box making very very precise they are fantastic scissors you will not want to use any other scissors once you've had them home um, I promise you they're fantastic what would you like to do now Jamie oh we're gonna have a little break we're going to have a look and see what Club Inspire is all about. Welcome to Club Inspire, the crafters companion community where you can feed your crafty obsession. Join our fantastic loyalty club today and receive 20% of your first order. We'll also give you 250 points to help get you started. Other benefits of joining Club Inspire include exclusive special offers and discounts for Club Inspire members only, exclusive sneak peek previews of brand new product launches, and of course, the Club Inspire community group on Facebook. 
where you can access exclusive content such as downloads, offers and inspiration. And of course, you can chat and share your makes with other members. You'll receive one point for every pound, dollar or euro you spend. And the more points you receive, the more benefits you'll unlock. So what are you waiting for? Sign up, join the club and start rewarding yourself today. We get to know people from places and walks of life that we wouldn't come across in our everyday life if it wasn't for um, Crafters TV and doing what we do. I got so many lovely comments from people when I started doing the presenting and it was just really such a lovely um, feeling. And it's nice that people keep messaging in, you know, we see the same, same people and we know you can build up that kind of relationship with those people. So it's just the fact that people like what we do and they're pleased. And I do love it when people send us photographs of the items they've made. We talk about customers, but really, they go in as a customer, come out as a friend. The support that I get is amazing. The messages I get are amazing. Me, personally, it is personal interaction. I've never had the best of health. I've always been open about that uh, with our viewers at Crafters TV. So many people are in the same situation as me health-wise. Other people have got a completely different health issues. They understand and they relate to what I'm going through, what others are going through. So whether we interact on a crafting basis or whether we interact on a health basis, a personal basis, we're all there to support one another. It is incredible. The reaction of viewers when they come to meet us is worth all of the, the early mornings when we have to get up for our early morning shows. Some of the customers come on as craft ambassadors and things like that, craft along with us and being able to actually chat with them on air. I love it, I really love that connection with them. We've had lots of uh, shows where we've done like um, craft alongs especially, where we've had viewers craft along with us. We had a particular viewer, Joy, who joined us once before and she literally made me cry on air and Jo uh, because the things she said about us it really was quite humbling that there are people out there that watch us and and invite us into their living rooms and really treat us like family welcome back we're going to catch up with christine and see how she is how she's getting along hi christine hi hi i can hear you well now christine um how are you hi. getting along there um so i did some of my pieces are... oh you've started fantastic you're flying mm -hmm. let's have a look at your box sides oh it's looking pretty that <gasps> colorway is gorgeous that colorway is gorgeous it's like a coral is it it, it is like it an orange it, coral yeah, in the state with flowers. It's absolutely beautiful. I love yeah. that. That's coming together really well, Christine. I'm <laughs> loving your colour choices. Thank you. Um, are we going at an OK pace for you, Christine? Yeah, really good. Great. Good. Thank you very much. We'll be back with you in a second. Thank you. Thank you. OK, then, so we'll go back to our jam and let's get on with the next stage. Yep. Now, I'm going to leave my pieces flat because if you've watched me before, I do... I do like to decorate things while it's still flat and then the last thing we'll do is pop the corners together to make our box so I've got all my pieces stuck on the lid now I've got the base at the ready still got my B on that one ready I'm gonna pop those to one side and we're gonna bring the dies in and start and do some die cutting so if you've got one of these sets you can do what we're gonna do easily with one of the sets because the designs there for you I was a little bit cheeky and dipped into four different ones so just to show you that there is a mix and match element within these as well so we're going to start off with the Georgian, as our Craig would call it, the Georgian swirls. I love swirls. it when he says that word, swirls and carols. It's like I could listen to him all carols. day, bless him. <laughs> all right, so we're going to take that one out and I want that large background piece out of this particular one. So just that background piece. And I'm going to take some of the spare Centura pearl that we had. This was what I cut off when we made those original cuts in for, to make that box uh, piece. This is what was left. So all I'm going to do is take this onto a piece of the white just make sure it stays in place there. I'm just going to be very frugal and bring it down to the corner. And then I'm going to take away any excess card. So just to chop away the rest of it rather than running. I don't like running cardstock through the Gemini unnecessarily because 
it, it tends to warp it when it yeah. doesn't know what to do with it because it's expecting a die or an embossing folder so the pressure applied just to the card tends to warp it and then you've got a piece of card that's not really workable so I always take the excess away work on the piece that we're going to cut and I'm actually going to cut a couple of pieces at the same time because I can so that's going to be layer number one layer number two we're going to use the same element so the same die should I say so the Georgian swirls and we're going to take the next piece down so the next one out of that set okay and I'm actually going to take that next color so if you remember we made our matte layers out of the lilac and then I had a complementary color from that pearlescent card pad so again I'm just going to take a corner out of here so that I'm not putting any through unnecessarily and we're going to cut that layer out of the green so again I'm going to stick that one down and we'll get all these at the ready so that we can pass them through the machine then afterwards. So that's my first two layers. I'm just going to pop those to one side for now. Layer number three, I'm going to take the Venetian charm. So the first two are layer one and layer two from Georgian Swirls. And then I'm coming into a different set. So the Venetian charm set, I'm going to take... The, the second one so I've left the outside let me pop that on there so that you can see it a bit better so I've, just for everyone at home Jan if you've got the bundle you can do what Jan's doing yeah you can mix the sets if however not, if you've got one set you can just, just keep, keep on going down the, the just sets keep yeah. going down the same set of dice absolutely to do this. yeah so for mine I'm going to leave the, the, the large one and I've taken the second one out of here all right so we're going to pop that to one side and that one is going to be in our uh, purple, I believe. Here we go, this one. So the scrap that was left over from my matting and layering. So again, I'm just going to cut a piece that's a suitable size to go through the machine. And then make sure I just tape it in place so that it doesn't spin off when I pick up the cardstock and pop it in there. So that one's on there. So that's that one. And then, where are we going next? Let's have a look. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to cut these now so that it doesn't get too confusing with keep swapping the change in the die. So we'll yes. get these cut rather than have a big pile of them and people not quite know where we're going. So all I'm going to do then is take my Gemini plates and I'm hoping I can fit all three of those pieces on together. So a bit of housekeeping there. Just get that the right, the right way. Oh, the right. I got a bit of Sheffield coming out there, Liam. The right way. <laughs> a bit of the right way. Here we go. And we're going to pop that piece in and I'm hoping that those two will fit. Ooh, let's just take that excess off there. I think, yeah, we should just about be able to get those all in together like yeah, so. Be okay. So again, shims in. We've got our plastic shim. We've got our magnetic shim and then a bit of housekeeping again. Give it a flip for that last clear cutting plate so I would only add um, the metal shim into this plate combination if I was maybe going to cut out of glitter card or something like that the card that has a coating uh, I would probably pop the metal shim in there just to give it that extra bite if you hear the cracking like it's doing there don't panic there's nothing wrong with your Gemini, it's just applying the pressure to that metal. And quite often, I find it's the dies that have the open space in them. Mm -hmm. All right, it does make it sort of have a little crack and a, a crunch. Can be a bit scary the first time it happens. So the two coloured ones I'm going to take out of the equation. And then this big one that we've got cut out of the Centura, I actually want to emboss again. So if you were watching me earlier this morning, you saw me do this with the, um, the dies this morning. So I'm literally going to leave this on my plate, face up this time. I'm going to keep this bit in there just to keep the die in place. Like so. Ooh. Where did it come out of? There. And then I'm going to bring in my um, embossing mat. Pop that over the top. And then I'm going to swap out my magnetic shim. I don't need this one. Just pop the plastic shim back in, minus any bits of cardstock. And then the top cutting plate. And we're just going to pass that through 
a second time so that we get that lovely embossed detail onto that flat piece and then we're going to pop a little bit of ink to, to bring it out of itself again. So just like we did, as I say, if you're watching this morning, we did this on Wake Up Call, if you've just joined us for this show, all that silicon mat's doing is pushing the cardstock into those gaps where there's no cutting edge and it gives a beautiful embossed detail. Now on the Centura Pearl, I just think it's exquisite when you emboss like this. Mm -hmm. I can actually see it here in the studio from the back before we actually turn it over. So I'm going to take it out just to show you, but ideally you want to keep your piece in the die. So if I just pop this one out oh. so that you can see there, I mean, just on its own. Wow. That is absolutely stunning. And it's worth, in my opinion, it's worth that extra pass through the machine. Don't try and do this all at the same time, because if you pop your... <clears throat> magnetic shimmin with your silicon rubber embossing mat then you're likely to damage the embossing yeah. mat so yeah do do it does need two separate passes yeah. and then what I'm going to do is pop the die back in place you'll feel it if it has come out you'll feel it. it's like a bit like a jigsaw you'll feel it just click back into place within the die turn it over and then because I'm working with the lilac I've just chosen some of our pale fig uh, water reactive ink along with one of my little not that one Jan that one little daubers and we're just going to load up the dauber and then just through that gap and the Centura Pearl I love inking uh, I often get asked whether you can ink onto Centura Pearl and yet of course you can and it does dry quite quickly sure. if you were using the opaque ink through here you could actually do this technique and then add some clear embossing powder so that you get a shiny finish on it which again is, nice. is adding another uh, element to it so you know take it as far as you wish but all four sides okay or if you don't have the opaque inks you could use um, a colored you could use a, a sticky ink like our um, watermarking can put a coloured embossing powder over the top of it just to highlight this the but shimmer ink the new shimmer ink oh, look lovely Jen, i've not got my hands on those yet leanne oh. I'm, I'm, my fingers are itching you know what i'm like with my inks and my colour yeah i love anything that applies colour and honestly i'm itching to get hold of them i've not got a set yet they're fabulous jan i bet i've watched them i watched when they were launched and i was just like oh i need these in my life I love anything to do with colour, whether it's ink pads, alcohol pens, you name it. Me too, and I like a bit of shimmer on my magpie. Yes, very much so. Now, you might think, oh, what's it done, Jan? But when you look now, it's done quite a bit. And this is dry now. I'm not too worried about whether it's going to smudge or not. But I just think it's worth that extra minute or two to do the second pass through the machine and then just add your glitter. If you don't have the finger daubers, you can do that technique with your sponge applicators just the same. If you don't have either of those, you can just do it on. Now, this is always sounds like a contradiction in terms. If you've got a dry wet wipe, you can use that and pop it in your ink and just push it through with the you wet can. wipe. Or a okay. cotton bud will work yep. as well. Yep. So that's going to be our first layer. If I bring this one in, we're going to have this one on the front like so. Pretty. That's going to be our first layer. And then if we start and take some of these out of the, uh, the dies, now they're all fastened together. They decided they were very friendly. So take away the bits, either use your die brush or your pokey tool and just release the die from the... Uh, one of those, that's the one. One of them's a release hole in there. And just gently, I like to tease these out of the die rather than taking the die off the card. That way I'm in control of what's happening with my card stock. If you take the metal work off the card, sometimes you can snag that beautiful detail. So again, make sure that's all clear. All the bits are popped out, okay? And we've got that one. I'm just gonna keep the spare bits to one side. And then this was the other one from that original Set. So make a pile of the waste. Isn't that lovely on its own just to highlight that piece of the paper pad? Honestly, yeah. So you could just I use know, one I've layer I've heard on you own. talk about this before, yeah. Leanne, and, and it's like, you know, some of the paper pads are so beautiful. Yeah. They don't need a lot, do they? Or yeah. how about a photo behind there? Yeah. Would make a, f a beautiful photo frame, Absolutely wouldn't it? Absolutely, it would. So again, once you've got it started, I like to just lift it out of the... Um, the frame there and you can see you know most of the bits have stayed in the frames we can clean those up later but this one now is going to sit as it should be inside here just as the beginning of my sort of layering and then this one's now going to twist 
So if you remember, we changed the designs here and I'm going to lay this one. We're going to build up quite a, a nice collection of these on top. OK. Oh, hey, Jamie's stealing me thunder, Jan. <laughs> um, he thought of a song. He's, he's, let's twist again like we did last summer. So, ting. That one was for Jamie, though. That one was for Jamie. I was so on the uptake there, Jamie. Thank you. So I've just got all my dyes sort of out of the way now because I'm, I'm sort of flitting again. So I've just got those ready to stick so that I'll show you how they're actually going to fit together. And Don't the fact those that we're swapping. colours work beautifully, Jan? Oh, beautiful. That's exquisite, that. But I didn't have to think of this. It's just I've just taken the colours from the paper yeah. pad. Just like we did with this one. We'd gone with the pinks and we'd gone yeah. with that lovely... It's almost a lilac-y yeah. tone, a hydrangea sort of shade, and then that pale pastel one. Mm. Just alternating to pick up the details in the background. But I just think... And this is what I love about the paper pads. You can understand why they sell so well, Leanne, because mm. a lot of people I find struggle with colour I get asked a lot about what colours go together but this has just taken inspiration from that pattern paper yeah. to start with it's got the lilac in it it's got the green in it you could even introduce a pink layer if you wished if you wanted to sort of go crazy with the yeah. layers I'm just going to stick with those colours okay and I'm going to flop at flop flit again now flip flop whichever way to beautiful baroque Lovely. now remember we have reinforced this both Leanne and I Leanne and I have said the same that if you don't have all the sets you can just layer up one of the sets as as it's intended so if you just have this set for example you can cut your alternate layers mm -hmm. out of one set and layer them up but because I've got the full set and I know a lot of you guys have we've got the beauty of actually mixing and matching them so beautiful baroque we're going to go down again and we're going to take that next size down so this is actually the second one out of this set here but it's slightly smaller than the one that we've got and we're going to go again we're going to swap it nice and twist it again okay yeah so we're going to come back then and let's have a look we've gone i'm going to go back to the green i think for this one so i'm literally alternating those layers so i'm just going to cut a piece of the green to fit this one you know you can go as far as you want with this if you really want to layer it up and go for it why not you can actually add, add some little um foam pads underneath them you could add some of the silicon glue to raise them if you wanted you know if you were hand delivering a gift and you didn't have to worry about it getting squashed yeah so i've got that on a piece of the green card and then the final one all right is the antique chic and we're just going to take the little heart i love the heart this one. and i must okay. just tell you jan betty weaver has messaged in to say jan I love how you show what you're doing or using and why as well as what other options there are and why those would work. Like when you gave options for the glue. She's so incredibly grateful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, do you know, that, that is my, that's what I see my job to be. And I do enjoy the teaching side of it. I must admit, I've spent a lot of time in my life teaching different things, uh, whether it be my, I mean, I spent 14 years in primary school. Um, and then I used to teach when I was at the store. We used to run classes pretty much every day at the store when pre-pandemic I think they're just about back to it now yeah um, but yeah I really enjoy I mean I've I've learned this over the last 20 years so to pretty much self-taught watching videos watching you know people like yourselves but to be able to actually come now and share that with you guys that is the bit that makes me happy yeah L what I've learned over the way and I always say it's what I've learned there's more than one way to do things it's not do what Jan says there are a lot and when you watch us I think that's where you get the value for money because you might for example get um, Craig come along and show you a completely different way to use these or, or approach it in a different manner and that's what I love about being part of the team because we've all got something different yeah. to bring to the table so what we're going to do now then is cut these last two pieces so this one just to recap was from um, beautiful baroque all right and I've taken that second piece here onto the green and then the last one was from the antique chic and we've just taken the little heart design, which is going to be our center focal point. So I've alternated again because we'd got to the lilac in my layering system. I've then gone back to the green and then finish off with the lilac. So okay. we're just going to pop those through the Gemini. And then we can think about how we're going to layer these up. And we're going to make this one 
we're going to pop some acetate behind this one and raise it up to pop those little pieces in to make the shaker element on this one. So I'm just going to pass those through the machine, Leanne, and okay. get those ready, get all the bits popped out so that I've got all my layers at the ready. OK, we'll catch up with everybody at home, yep. Jan, while you're doing that. Uh, Coletta Cooper says, gorgeous. Um, Charlotte says, this is so stunning. Beth says, I have a CC delivery coming today from birthday Ooh, week. Ooh, lovely. That's exciting. Shari says, Leanne and Jan, this is my first craft along. I've watched and watched and never seemed to have the right items. Not today. Oh, I just received my dies. Fabulous. That's fantastic, Shari. Uh, Sylvia said, enjoying this craft along, but only watching. Wisteria Collection has just arrived. Ooh, you're going to love that Wisteria Collection, Sylvia. Um... Now, Charlotte Everett, she said, I told myself I wasn't going to put another, another order in today. <laughs> but when the deals are so good, how can I not? I don't know, Charlotte. I'm with you on that one. 15 pence a sheet for Century Repair. It would be madness to miss that deal. I agree, exactly. Charlotte. Absolutely. And it's a consumable. I don't think it's a treat. This is how my brain works. You, I mean, if yours doesn't work the same. My brain works. I need, if I'm buying something that is a consumable and therefore I require it, card, glue, that kind of thing, that's not a treat. That's a necessity in my mind. And when a necessity is on such a good deal, then I'm going to save all the money I can. That's, yep. that's how I compute things, Jan. What about you? Absolutely. I agree totally. I always compare it to when I'm in the supermarket and the coffee's on offer. It yes. doesn't matter whether I've got two jars in the cupboard. I will always buy it when it's on offer because it's something that we use all the time and it, it, the dates on it are ridiculous. It keeps for yes. such a long time. I will stick those two jar, extra jars in the cupboard, in the trolley, and I've got them in place. And I think it's exactly the same with the crafting. Anything that you use on a regular basis, whether it be the adhesives, the cardstock, anything that's a consumable. And by consumable, we mean something that's going to sort of run out. Yeah. So your cardstock, you know, your paper pads eventually... I don't know whether I've actually got to the end of one yet, but uh, they do run out eventually. Same as the bottles of glue run out. So yep. that's what we mean by consumable. So buy them when they're on offer. Yes. If you're purchasing, for example, if you decided to go for the heritage dice today... You know, pop the card bundle in at the same time and then you've got, you're good to go with those offers. Don't miss them. No. I do the same with butter, Jan. Yep. Yep, whatever, because butter's very expensive. I'm, I'm proper butter, like, and you know, in a silver wrapper. Yep. Not the stuff in a tub that no. pretends to be butter but isn't butter. I like proper butter. And uh, because it's proper butter, you can freeze it. Because anything with a decent fat content, you can put in the freezer. Yep. So when that's on offer, I buy six. And I put them in the freezer. Why not? Yeah, because you save a fortune, Jan. You do, yeah. And, you know, why pay full price for it when you can get it on offer? And that's just the same with the crafty goods, yeah, isn't absolutely. it? You shouldn't have to make an excuse. Uh, Michelle Parsons says, it's really difficult to drool over these beautiful dyes and eat my delicious turkey enchiladas at the same Ooh, time. Now Ooh, now then. That's made my tummy rumble. We're jealous about everybody in my... Ooh, <laughs> turkey enchiladas. Uh, Charlotte says, you are so right, Jan. The knowledge the amazing CTV team have, are, they're so talented. Um, I think we do have an extremely talented and varied bunch of crafters here. And I think that's one of the joys. I think we're all very different in what we like, which brings you maximum um, inspiration, doesn't it? Depending on who's teaching that day. Now, we're just going to have a little catch up with our Christine. Hello, Christine. Hi. Hi. Are you keeping up? I am. I'm, I I'm trying to figure out how she did the shaker thing, but I'm waiting to see. Because I made two just in case I had back one. Oh. But she didn't doing that, but I'm not sure, so. Very good. <laughs> okay, so um, if you're keeping up, we'll come back to you in a little while because I think our Jan's ready for the next bit, Christine. Awesome. Right, so I've got those last two pieces at the ready then. And I just, I agree, Leanne, that little heart there. Just that bit on its own with the stamp sentiment would be just an, a lovely Enough. finish for any card, Anything. wouldn't it? Anything, I agree. And that's taking it totally out of the, you know, the nesting facility that we've offered with those heritage dies. I think that is just really, really pretty on its own. So those are going to be my last two layers. And we're literally going to take these and we're going to keep twisting all the way 
All right, so this one's going to go back to sort of its square shape. This is the piece that we're going to put the acetate behind. And then we're going to have the little heart on the top. And then I'm going to choose a sentiment out of that paper pad that will suit the, uh, the, the centre nice. there. You can just see that one. Lovely. wasn't showing up too well over there, was it? Yeah. Thank so you. what we need to do then, I want you to take, so if we count them from the bottom, you've got the white layer at the bottom. Then we had the second piece from that same die set that just sits inside. And then you had the next one, the third piece. I want you to take the fourth piece now, which is the smaller of the two square elements. OK, this is the one that we're going to work with next before we stick anything together. So I measured this and I just went from within the frame border here and I came up with two and three eighths, I think would probably be about a good size. So I'm just going to take my guillotine again and I'm going to cut. I've just brought a little scrap of acetate and I'm going to cut this to two and three eighths square. Now, if you've chosen different dies, if you're working with one set, for example, you need to get a piece of acetate that's just going to cover. So when we stick it on the back, it wants to come over the edge of the frame here so that there's no gap. So whatever that size is, if you have a different element at this point in your set of nesting dies, that's what we're actually going to do. So mine was two and three eighths. So mm -hmm. I'm just going going to have a look on the guillotine there and I'm just going to chop this scrap down to two and three eighths square and that will be sufficient now to make my little shaker window that's going to stick on the back and again if I bring this one so that you can see a little bit better we're actually going to flip it over and stick this one in the back of there so none of Lovely. it's showing on the filigree aspect it's all within the frame Lovely. and to do that I'm going to grab my three mil um, double-sided tape. Yes, your red liner. My red liner, when yes. I can find it. I'm nearly, oh, I've got a little bit of that one left. I brought some new ones because I've, I've run out of the other two. But yeah, just the narrow one, the three mil red liner. And what I'm going to do is pop that around the inside edge of this frame here. So I'm going to line it up with the inside edge here and then just pop it around all four sides. And I find that red line tape is probably the best thing to adhere um, oh, acetate. acetate with. Completely you can agree. do it with a wet glue, but it does take a little while to dry. Yeah. And I get very impatient. I Me like too. things to, you know, to be able to move on. And also, if you've took all that effort and then you've got a bit of wet glue and it squashes out the side, That's and the you can see the smear want, on your acetate. It? Yeah. It's not good, is it, Jan? If that does happen at any point, if you yeah. do find that that's happened, if you've got a little bit of rubbing alcohol uh, just on a, a cloth, you should be able to clean it back off your acetate. But like you say, you know, why go through all that when you can just pop this on and everything's in place. It's really sticky. It's going to do the job for you. Um, I'm often talking about things being fit for purpose, and this is an, a, a perfect example. So just burnish that into place get all rid of all those air bubbles and then we're just going to take the liner off it do you need any more jan uh, i think i've got some new ones in my bag thank you leanne okay. i usually keep a little stash i've got a one here if you thank need to you. pinch a bit thank you it's good to know that i've got some back up there if i need it so i'm just going to take the liner off there do you know, this is the sticky bit and it's always full of static. Hey, did you see Debbie Fisher's top tip yesterday? Oh, is it with the kitchen paper or yes. something? Yes! I've heard that before, I've just never got round to trying it. Oh my word, Janet, it was like magic! I once, I once remember going for my tea and Ooh. my husband's like, oh, what have you done to your arm? And I'd got a piece of this stuck to my arm. He thought I'd slash my arm on something. Yeah. yeah. Well, at least you just had a bit stuck to your arm. I actually went out for dinner with my husband had a bit stuck to my bum. Oh no! I'd been making a big boss like a little tail. It was stuck to my... It was, I was like, what's that on your backside, Leanne? I'm like, well, I don't know. I can't see round there. What is it? I'm trying to turn round and have a look like this. I don't know. What is it? I can't see. Can't turn round like that. He says, this. Like, oh, it's my red liner tape. It gets it's everywhere, the back doesn't it? my red liner. It I get it stuck everywhere. to the dog and everything. Yeah. So you can see now, if I tilt that into the light, you can see how we've got that whole window now encased with that acetate so everything's stuck down nothing's going to escape out of there and this is going to be the one that we're going to build up with our um, 
So, oh, I've just knocked it on the floor. Excuse me. We're going to build up with the foam tape to create the little hole for the, um, the shaker. So I think what we'll do now is give everybody a break to catch up. And then when we come back, we're going to start layering these in place and create that shaker element, Liam. Absolutely. Well, yep. I have got, I'm just checking your comments there as well. So many of you sending the comments um, and loving what our Jan's doing. So thank you for that. We'll catch up with you in a second. I just want to share our hero tool with you because it is our eight by eight stamping platform. Now in here, you get your magnetic base, you get your sprung loaded top and you get your four magnets for perfect positioning every time you stamp. And you've got a 15% saving on this today, a platinum price of 16.80 or 26.80 and you've got your 50 bonus points and i was just saying to everybody yesterday jan i like to shop when i'm getting bonus points oh of course why and i you? prefer a bonus point over a discount because bonus points get me to the next level of discount Absolutely. that i get across everything absolutely yeah so I do choose all of the bonus point deals when I'm shopping because I want I want to be up the levels. Um, and you've seen how that works with Club Inspire. And as you go up the levels, well, that, that level of discounts across everything, not just when there's a bargain. Yeah. And it's on top of things when there's a bargain. So with 50 bonus points, if you need a stamping platform, I think now now would be the time to do that. Because again, this is how my mind works. Consumable tool, not a treat. Yeah. That's my number one piece of equipment, that, Leanne. Yeah. I wouldn't be without the it. The 8x8 platform. Yeah. Yes, it's fabulous. As a stamper, which is where my crafting yeah. journey started many, many moons ago, I still love stamping and colouring. I wouldn't be, I use it even for just stamping a little sentiment. Do you? Just having that insurance to be able to do it again or deepen the ink to buy, by re-stamping. It's worth its weight in gold. Thank you, Jan. I really appreciate that. I, I mean, I'm proud of it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah. We're also, we've also got, if you don't want to do the stamping platform, we've got both sets of our rocker blocks. Now, these are my go-to, Jan. Yeah. And it's great, isn't it, having different viewpoints, it I is. think, isn't it? Different yeah. things you love. Um, I bought these when Sarah launched them before I was an employee of Crafters Companion. Uh -huh. um, when she ha was launching them on the TV, and she was actually launching them with the absolutely talented and beautiful Jane Nesterenko back oh, in the day. Oh, bless her, yeah. Um, they launched the Rocker Blocks. I bought Jane's first cute companion collection, oh, which were the little mice, yep. um, and the Rocker Blocks at the same time. I still own those same Rocker Blocks yep. to this day, and I use them every time I stamp. It's, it's what you get used to. Yeah. You, it's like anything else, isn't it? Anybody that's got a specific hobby will have favourite parts of their equipment, won't they? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I can hardly believe the price, the saving here. A 50% saving, it's almost a buy one, get one free. And a platinum price of 7 99 or 11 19 for all of these, not a choice, all of these rocker blocks. I think, again, it's a tool, it's not a treat. Um, I do use my platform for layering stamps. But for regular stamping, these are what I go to every yep. single time. And the guys backstage will tell you, because when they're preparing a show for me, if it's a stamping show, I look around and I go, Rocker Blocks! And they go, oh, she wants... <laughs> All the stamping platforms are there. They're like, oh, it's Leanne, Rocker Blocks. And they go and get me the Rocker Blocks. Because they do take all of the mistake out of stamping and make it just very, very easy to do. They really do. Um, now... Wow, so, so many of you joining in and having an absolutely great time. Um, Kiefer says, when was this collection launched? So, uh, Evelyn Kiefer, I, uh, the Heritage Dies were launched on the 28th of October. If you want to go back and find the show, presume that's what that's for. And it was with our Debbie Robinson. Laura Simmons, will rubbing alcohol get rid of fingerprints on acetate or just a dry cloth? Uh, no, it's brilliant. Honestly, the rubbing alcohol just brings it up as if it's Does new. It, it just looks like a window clean. pane. Yeah. Okay. Anything, any bits on it, if it's fingerprints, dust, a little bit of glue, anything like that, just to gently. Gets just be up. careful it doesn't, if you've got it attached to card. So like I've put my piece of acetate in here, I would have cleaned the acetate first because the alcohol will obviously damage the card. So clean the piece of acetate first and then pop it into your project. 
Thank you very much. And I would say a lint-free cloth. Yes. A uh, microfiber cloth. Yeah, don't you don't want the little tissue. bits of cotton sticking yes, in there. Yes, it defeats the objective, it? really it? defeats the object. You don't want bits of cotton wool, you don't want bits of tissue, paper. Yeah. So I'd say lint-free, microfiber cloth, yeah. rubber and alcohol. Um, Shari says, I was wondering if they were interchangeable. Thank you so much, Jan, for demonstrating that aspect. This makes this set even that much better. Absolutely. Completely agree with that, Shari. Um, now, Deborah Spencer... She's a girl after my own heart, Deborah. She says, I agree, Leanne, capital letters, I agree, Leanne, I love to stock up on my butter also. Oh, there we go. <laughs> on sale in Texas, I'm lucky to get a pound for 3 <gasps> it's, it's expensive. Goodness me, yeah. A pound of butter for 3 yeah. It's expensive stuff. Uh, put it in the freezer. That's what I do all the time. Michelle Parsons says, Leanne, the problem is, she's laughing when she says this, I consider all capitals of the CC products essential. Of course they are. Of course they are. Just, it just depends how essential it is to you. Absolutely, Michelle, I'm with you. Uh, and Rhonda says, Jan is the instruction, instructional guru. Oh, bless. Thank that you lovely, very Jan. much. Thank um, you. Oh, so many more comments. Charlotte, she's given us an update on our delivery. She's been updating us since wake-up call this morning, <laughs> Charlotte Everett. Uh, Charlotte says, only 12 stops to 12 go now. 12 stops, yes. It was 100 and something this morning. Only 12 stops to go now, and Wisteria will be in my hands just as CTV finishes. Perfect timing. Oh, <gasps> what a glorious afternoon. And then you've got two hours before we're back again for beautiful beginning, Charlotte, Can to just enjoy your Wisteria yeah. and then come back and see us later on. Uh, Liegecraft says, bonus points are no good to me. I'm already at the top level and have been for many years, but a discount is useful to me. Well, do you know what? That yep. is the joy of CTV. That's make the joy of Crafters Companion. You. you get both and you choose which is the most important to you and you get to make that choice. And that's what I love about shopping with Crafters Companion. And believe me, I do a lot of Crafters Companion shopping. Jan, are you ready for your I next I am step? good. Yeah, we're okay. going to start with this layering technique now. So I've actually brought in both of my tape pens here because they're both going to play a crucial role in this. So if I un 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 sort of deconstruct this again, take them out, <coughs> we're going to start with that layer, that white layer that we did the inking on. And because this has got a flat surface on the back, I'm actually going to use my double-sided tape pen. So again, fit for purpose, make sure we're using the right one. You can can use your dots on here they won't go amiss on it but I don't like wasting these I like keeping these for my die cuts so just on the back of here then if you're using a wet glue again at this moment in time I'd be sticking with my all-purpose because we're just going cardstock to cardstock and even though it's a slightly pearlized finish I think the all-purpose would work well there so mm -hmm. again we're going to bring this one Make sure if you've got an orientation on your paper that you've got it the right way now. So I want my flowers here. Although we're not going to see a lot of that when it's finished, I want those at the bottom there. And I'm going to centre this one in the middle there. So again, you can just lay it down. And until you actually press it down firmly, you've got a little tiny bit of room to, to just play around with it. So once you're happy with that in the centre, yep, I then want you to give it a really good press so i find sometimes it's easier to turn it over and give it a good press down from that reverse so that you've got it stuck down nicely the last thing you want to do especially because we're going to pop some shaker pieces in is for any of this to fall apart and then the next layer was that same this was the same die set if you're following my layers that color's beautiful this isn't it gorgeous mm just fits inside here. Now again, if I stopped, if I continued with my double-sided tape now on the back of here, every time it's stretched across this gorgeous filigree work, I'm gonna see like the sticky yeah. bits and Stringy I don't bits. want that. No. Don't want sticky bits. So that's as, this is where the dots come in. Nice light hand, and we're just gonna run that across the back, all over that, and honestly, sticky tape with a hint of magic <laughs> if you use a light touch, we're not privy to Leanne's secrets, but uh, yeah, there's nothing here. Nothing on the glass mat at all. It's all on there. And this one's going to sit nicely. This is where I usually end up with my tweezers here so that I can sort of hover. And there should just be perhaps about an eighth of an inch gap all the way around. But you'll find that because that was the same set of dies, that just nests in there beautifully. And again, rather than rubbing that filigree work, turn it over 
and give it a good press. Now that's why I like to keep my box flat at this bit so that I can apply that that's pressure. That's a great top tip because I would have been tempted to construct my box. And then you're working on that and hollow bit, that, unless you yeah. put something inside it it's to rest hard, on. I, I, I nearly tip. always do my boxes flat yeah, and then like the last that. thing I do is stick them together. Oh, Christine's waving hers. She's constructed hers. Christine's like me. Christine. Has she gone ahead? Look yes. at that. Let's, let's go on, show us again, Christine. Yep. Yeah. Fabulous. Well, I, I do love that kind uh, of put together already because I didn't want to mess up on which was the top and which was the bottom. <laughs> so I went first. Yeah, Christine, I do the same. Don't apologize. I think it's a great top tip from Jan, though. I think I'll be making them flat in the future. Yeah, I like where she put her little markings on the tab so yeah. you'll never see it. So that's always good. Yeah, yeah. it's going to stick inside when we're finished. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Thanks, Christine. So again, I'm staying with the glue pen because we're on those filigree elements. Yes. So just, I can't emphasize how light. If you press on, then yes, you're going to push the glue through onto whatever's underneath. And I know some people like to work on a piece of scrap card. You know, so if you've got a piece of card left over, you can work on there. But you know, I just Jan, find... I think a light hand without tape pens across the board yes. is an important lesson to yes. learn. Because we do get sometimes get comments from people who are like, I can't get my tape pen to work or my tape pen has broke. Yep. And always I reply uh, through customer service and my thing is, just ask how much pressure we're applying. Yep. You don't need to push the tape pen through the counter. Not at and all. And you don't need to apply pressure for the glue to be applied. If you use a light hand with no pressure, yep. then it works absolutely beautiful, it? does, it? and then you can apply the pressure once you've got it in place yeah. on your project, yeah? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have a look on that base layer and you can see there's a central point in the design on all four sides. So this one's actually going to line up pretty much with those points so that you can get that sort of tilt and make sure that it's in the right place. So I'm just eyeballing that it's about the same distance all the way around. And then again, pop it into place and then turn it over to apply that pressure. And that way you're not gonna risk damaging that, that gorgeous die cut that you've got there. So we've now got three layers on. We've alternated between the, the white Centura Pearl, the green one, which was just a filler really. And then we've gone to that sort of lilac lavender uh, level. Now the next one's gonna be our piece that we popped the acetate in here so this one's going to start and raise up a little bit okay that one's going to go square again here yeah so i will be lining that one up with the points here in that other side of the octagon okay but before we do that we yeah. need to apply a little bit of the old foam on a roll foam on a roll All can right. i ask you to pause there for a second please absolutely Jan? yeah because we're just going to show everybody this um nesting die starter kit yep. which i think is absolutely um useful if you are wanting to do some techniques with nesting dies and you need everything that you need to do some techniques so the first thing we've got is this fabulous knitwit home body collection 24 sheets of linen card and the beautiful colors you can see there this color very similar to that one jan's using which i'm absolutely loving i have to say it's like a almost like a grey, greeny blue, very nice. And then we've got some inkjet acetate, so that would do the windows for your shakers. Yep, absolutely. We've got a whole packet of sequins, the contents of your shaker. We've got your foam on a roll, Jan's using that now. We've also got your permanent tape pen to put all of your layers together. We've got a whole pack, three rolls of our repositionable tape to keep your dies nice and still. And we're putting a pack of our inverted nesting dies in there for you. And your platinum price of $24 or 32, uh, sorry, £24 or $32 with a 20% saving, a 40% saving. I mean, it's marvellous, Jan, isn't it? A I know, I keep going on about nesting dies. Yeah. But I really, I, <laughs> these were just like, these just blew me out of the water. Did you love them? We are so used to having the detail on the outside of a nesting die that when it came on the inside, oh, the possibilities. Yes. Oh, I don't put any of my nesting dies away, Leanne. They have a special box that they live in because they are so, so usable, yes, honestly. Yes, they are. Even if it's just for die cutting a fancy piece to put a sentiment on, you know, up to going to large scale, you know, doing something like like this yeah. they have a box that are just nesting dies good for you and they all sit in there together I think that's a good tip Jan actually yep. and if you would like to start trying some techniques with your nesting dies this is a great kit for you 
And then um, if you need some further nesting dies, we've got these fabulous Christmas ones. We looked at these this morning in um, our uh, wake-up call and you can see these are uh, actually one demo of the show, didn't it? Uh, Dan's got it on the corner of our bench there, we'll have a yes. look at it. Because they are absolutely oh, beautiful. The level of detail that you've got in here is absolutely incredible. I'm just going to turn these over so I can read the names of them. <laughs> so this is Yuletide Bloom. You see you've got those lovely poinsettias. Each layer that you can see there of nesting gives you a brand new look and feel and each layer is a different pattern to the previous layer which really does bring lots of possibilities you've got your my personal favorite festive foliage we've got and therefore our square cards then we've got our oblong cards and we've got beautiful baubles and then we've got our sparkling snowflakes We've got our slimline, and I'm loving the slimline card, Jan. Yep, we're the, going to use one of those later on are in, we? Uh, at six o'clock. It's yeah. a beautiful beginning. We're going to make a box with it as well <gasps> rather oh, than a, a card. So we're going to do a nice slimline box. It'd be great for sort of putting maybe a tie-in or a scarf, something Ooh, like that. Oh, maybe it's a pair of leather gloves. Yep, something oh, like that. Oh, yep. nice. Oh, we'll be able to so join us for beautiful beginnings. And the saving on this is incredible. It's a 35% saving on the whole bunch. You're getting them all. You don't have to choose. You've got your um, fabulous Starry Night and we've got Holly and Berries as well. So you can see a beautiful collection there, a great saving. Um, and if you wanted to do some nesting and maybe heritage isn't for you or if you're loving the heritage so much you want a few more nesting, there's some options for you. Thank you, Jan. Right, so all I've done while Leanne's been showing you those gorgeous nesting dies is pop my foam tape around that little frame so that we can't see it when we look at it from the front there. Okay, and I've just made sure, top tip when you're doing this is to make sure that where you've got the corners here, there are no gaps because obviously those sneaky shaker bits can get out of the smallest, tiniest little gap. So make sure it's all nicely sort of pushed up to itself. Now then, this is where the tricky bit comes because when I first started making shakers, I used to put my shaker bits in here and then they all stuck to the foam and then I used to try and get it and, and I was like, where am I going to put it? Because I can't see what I'm doing. And then the light bulb moment happened where I decided to do it the other way around. Mm -hmm. So I've got this ready. I've taken the liner off the foam tape so that this is sticky now. And I'm actually going to put my pieces onto here. Yes. And then we can line this up over the top. Lovely. Just, I don't know why it took me a while to learn that, but yeah, you learn the hard way. So, choices here. We can use that gorgeous, gorgeous chunky glitter. We've got that in the deal for you today. looks beautiful. And it's if, a very reasonable deal. It is. And if you don't have this, you know, any of your sequin packs that you have, I love the iridescent. These are, We do these in lots of different colours, but I always stock up on the iridescent ones because they go with pretty much anything and they take on the colour of what you're working with. So either of these, if you don't have these, you can use the little seed beads, anything that's going to roll around. Failing all else, we even make a die that cuts out the shaker pieces yes. and those are coming up later on uh, uh, beautiful, yes, beginnings. beautiful beginnings and we've just put the details of that uh, deal which has the chunky glitter in for you across the bottom of your screen in case you're interested in that now because i don't trust myself with the glitter <laughs> i'm just going to go with the sequins okay and i'm just gonna because i know i know what i'm like with the glitter i'll end up with it everywhere shall i tell you my top tip for corralling the glitter when you're doing a shake because i put my shakers together like this yeah you know our broad paint brush jan Oh, right. I put the glitter on and then I use the broad paintbrush to sweep my, almost like into sweeping the, in the backyard. Excellent. Sweep it into a little pile. Yep. Um, and then just whack the thing over the top. Fabulous. I will retain that. Okay, so I've just popped a, a little bit in there, Lovely. not too much in the centre. And then because it's shaker, and this is just me being pedantic again, you know, the foam tape is sticky. One can see it's sticky, but just as an insurance policy, I usually take my tacky glue Me and too. add a little bit of that on to the top of the foam tape. And there. just a tiny bit. Yeah, just if you put too much, it's going to squeeze out and yeah. you'll see it through the acetate. So what I tend to do is just pop it on and then smear it across the, 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 the tape there. Me too. All right. And then we can pop this one in place. So this one's going to go square because the last one was at an angle. So we're going to bring it back square again. And I'm going to use these points here 
in that design and this again you know everything's been thought of you know this is actually part of the design but it's actually an anchor point that you can now line up with so just eyeball that it's all roughly in the same distance and when you're happy pop that piece down and the next top tip is to just leave it alone for a second we're all giddy we all want to shake yeah. it i've done it myself you just need to let that glue dry well, for a second well while that's drying i've got a load more comments uh, jan so that's let's do that perfect as well. timing still yep. sparkly says running out of butter is a disaster oh, not it really to be is. done you can't have hot butter toast when you really need a piece of hot butter toast if you haven't got any butter and also i like to be able to see my teeth marks in the butter oh of course you're making me hungry. Honestly, um, I need to. Have you I, ever what you know? Does, do we all know Nigella Lawson? We do. Um, I hope, do you know G Nigella Lawson over there in the States? Please let me know. Uh, Christine, do you know Nigella Lawson? We're nodding. Excellent. Nigella Lawson does a thing called double buttered toast. Oh. Have you seen it? She makes the loaf of bread and she butters it, lets the layer of butter melt in, and then puts another layer of butter on. So you can see your teeth in it. Do you and stab then, your toast, Leanne? Yeah, I have never stabbed my toast. Oh, Jan. honestly, get your fork and stab your toast before you butter it, and then it all seeps oh, into the, the prong word. holes. Oh, Jan, when I get in the house tonight, cause you know, when I've worked late at see TV, I have oh, toast before somebody I go to cracked bed. up when they said, "They're like, what are you doing? What are you doing to the toast? What's it done wrong?" But yeah, just just stab gently, it. not all the way through. No, just break the Prick surface it. of it with the prongs on the fork, yeah. and then when you butter it, it starts seeping into those. Oh. Oh, I think Christine loves that oh. idea. She was gesticulating wildly. <laughs> um, I am going to try that tonight when I get home, yeah. Jan. Then, after she double butters it, Nigella, she puts a sprinkle of sea salt flakes on. Oh. Now, Charles has gone, don't knock it. Oh, oh, is it ooh. Yes, because you can buy I actually watched Nigella and I thought, you? Nigella, you've gone too far now. <laughs> Teaching people how to butter toast and put salt on it. Come on, Petty, you can do better than that. However, I tried it. Oh! <gasps> It's a taste sensation. I would recommend it highly. I really would. Uh, Coletta Cooper says, great tip to freeze your butter, Leanne. That's what I'm here for, Coletta. It's not just about craft. <laughs> it's about life. Um, Stephen Lee, guys, says, my wisteria arrived an hour ago and I'm playing. Loves it. Good for you. And I did that because he's got lots of cheese in the message. <laughs> so it was singing the playing. Coletta Cooper says, working on the Bethlehem bauble. Love it. Cut the inner delicate bit out of the glitter cardstock, plus put an adhesive sheet on the back before die cutting. I'm having a time poking the bits out. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Take your time and just use it as a moment of mindfulness to think about how lucky you are to have all those crafty things. Coming just there. a top tip there, Leanne. Yeah, if you're on, using self-adhesive sheets, mm. yes, sometimes it's hard to get all those bits out. But what I find is when you peel the backing off... Yeah a lot of those bits come away automatically. Oh. So don't spend an age trying to get them all out. Wait until you're ready to use it. Peel the backing sheet off the adhesive and you'll find that a lot of the bits that you thought were stuck actually come away come with away. the backing sheet. So it's been kissed really. And then you really. might just have an odd one or two that you need to sort of like tease out. Tease out, oh, try that. That's yep. a, thank you, Jan, that's a great top tip. Um, Rose Barker says, Christine, that card is very pretty. That's from Rose. Shelley White says, my son came home from college for the holidays. Uh, he hasn't been home in a while. He took one look at my craft room and said, crafter's companion got his college tuition. <laughs> 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 well, if he's left home, he's left home. You made his choice. You make your, you do, you, you make, you make your bed, you lay in it. That's what I say. Uh, Rose, that is, that's very pretty. Patricia, beautiful, Jan. Mary Beth Doyle, I've learned so many great tips from Jan today. Always love her demos. Shari says, I've two more orders coming. I splurged a little after birthday week with my discounts. Okay, I splurged during birthday week too. Of course you did. We all did. Now it is to work to support my craft addiction. <laughs> we'll watch the rest later and hopefully post my make. Take care in the rain we will do Rhonda says Leanne could you please do the foam pads and the foam on a roll in black please oh yes excellent suggestion please yeah. leave it with me uh, Shari says love the new Christmas nesting dies Charlotte Everett I've ordered that chunky glitter it looks amazing it is Karen says could you use a small funnel to place the glitter where you want it I don't see why not I don't know I, I think you should put you a little spoon a teaspoon and then use your brush to corral it it's all right. I think a funnel with a chunky glitter, they might get the stuck. The strangest things in your craft bag. Have you got, what have you little got? A little plastic spoon. spoon. Yeah, a little They're plastic spoon. They're not static. So, yeah, as far as glitter and things like that, 
I mean, you can get these anywhere, you know, any of the, um, the good old takeaway stores, you can pick them up. But yeah, for glitter and things like that, they're great because it doesn't stick to the plastic. OK, Laura Simmons, which glitter did Jan have in that jar? It's this glitter, Laura, and it is... We're going to strap it for you and we're going to give you the details. It's this glitter from the Enchanted Dreams collection. Um, and we've got a little bundle for you for just $5.99 or uh, $7.99 for you today. Yeah, we're good. there we've got the details for you. $4.79 or $6.36. So you get this little uh, packet of blooms, but you get this huge jar of that very, very beautiful glitter. It really is gorgeous and it's so colourful and iridescent. I don't know whether you can see all the colour changes there. It really is. Look over there. Oh, 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 oh. oh. daisy I'll get it in the back in the jar, don't worry. You can see all the little colour changes. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? So I would highly recommend that. I mean, I'm looking down here now and we've got pink and green and gold. Oh, it's beautiful. Uh, so there you go, Laura. That's for you. Jan, I'm going to let you crack on. Yep. I'm just looking at the clock now. It's just disappeared, has it? We're almost there, actually, apart. And I never worry too much about the embellishments because we can give you an idea of what to do. But I think embellishments are very personal. So as long as we've got the construction done and this part finished, I'll show you what I did on the original one and then you can embellish to your heart's content if you think it needs it so you should have left the little heart shape piece that we cut out there and I'm going to continue with my dotty tape pen there even over that acetate element it will work fine now be when you get to something this small be really really delicate with it you know you don't want a, a, too too much pressure and I always tend to look at which way the die cuts are going so for example if you've got any little frondy bits like there are here come out towards them rather than coming in which is likely to sort of pull them the wrong way and snag yeah. them so just have a think about which way it's die cut and you just want some little tiny bits on there and we're going to pop this one right in the center if it's not stuck to me there we go so this one's just going to overlap slightly onto that center square there and frame that middle piece there and then I'm going to actually pop my box together now before we Great. put the sentiment on. So the only thing I'm going to do there is come back again to my double sided tape and on all four of the tabs, I'm just going to make sure that I've got plenty of that tape on there so that we can actually fold these in together. OK, and I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to bring the base piece back in that's just been sat there feeling all neglected over the course of the couple of hours. So just put some on those tabs again and we're going to stick these together now to create that box in its entirety. And then the last thing we're going to do is choose a sentiment from the paper pad and actually finish that one off. So again, just bringing those corners to make a nice 90 degree angle there. Give it a good sort of press inside. And if you want to be really sort of sure that everything's in place, I usually take my bone folder and just give it a good yeah, do press that. down over the top of it. Anything, don't stick yourself to the box, Jan. Anything that's going to be a gift like this, the last thing you want, you know, if it's a card or a gift box like this, the last thing you want is it to fall apart when your recipient opens it. So again, we're going to do the same with I this one. I think some nice homemade chocolates in there, or Jan. Some fudge. Fudge. You like a nice piece of fudge, I love Leanne. a bit of nice fudge. What's your favourite flavour? <gasps> oh, I, lo I love a salted caramel. Do you? I do love a salted caramel. I like a, a little vanilla. bit of vanilla. You can't rum go and past raisin. vanilla. Oh, my husband loves a rum and raisin. A rum and raisin. I like ice cream. Rum and raisin ice cream My as husband well. does. Whenever we go, that's the only yep. I eat. Rum and raisin. I never even have to ask. If yep. you've got rum and raisin, that's what I'm getting him. Um, I make my own rum and raisin ice cream for Christmas, <gasps> Jan. Oh, goodness me. Uh, and I make it with, again, Nigella's recipe. Yeah. And it is so easy. No churn, nothing. You just whip it up in your whipper, put it in the freezer, done. It's amazing. Um, however, I do love... Sarah's Bailey's fudge. Yes. Now, Bailey's, I don't drink a lot of alcohol, but Bailey's is on the list of ones that I do. She makes amazing fudge, does Sarah. Now, then, I'm just having a look here. There's so many to choose from in here. You could go with any of these. I think because these are die cut, um, I'm going to go with one of those. And I'm going to pick out... 
Let's see if that one's too big. So in, if you've got the paper pad in the back of there, the last Ooh, three pages are So one are of the comments has just said peanut butter fudge. <gasps> there we go. Look, that looks fine. Oh, I love a bit of peanut yep. butter fudge. I just so, love peanut butter. I can eat peanut butter out of the jar with a spoon. Now, I'm not a big lover of peanut butter. Are you not? I like peanuts, but peanut butter, I don't oh, know what it is. I love peanut it's butter. It's not, not my f most favourite thing. My favourite thing with peanut butter is hot buttered toast, peanut what? butter, banana, drizzle of honey. Oh, oh very indulgence. decadent. It's delicious. So all I've done there is choose a suitable sentiment yeah. out of the back of the pad. Just curved it a little bit with my bone folder just to give it a little bit of texture. And I've just popped glue under this side and glue under that side. And then I'll show you the one, as I say, we, we added a couple of embellishments to yeah. the one that I did earlier. With Do you the... know what that is, Jan? Do you know what that is? Is, the, is it a cue for a song, Leanne? Simply the best. I agree. <laughs> I couldn't resist it. <laughs> so, yeah, we just added the little foam flower here yeah. with some of the sprigs and a little butterfly. But again, you know, I always say embellishment is really personal. Depends on the gift. It depends on the person that you're giving the gift to as to how you want yes. to embellish. So we've got the structure there. You've got those lovely little iridescent sequins lovely. behind. And you've got a nice fit with that scoreboard. No worrying whether it's going to fit every time. Thank One you, over the Jan. Other. We've got two minutes left. So we're going to say thank you, Jan. Really beautiful. We've got two minutes. We're going to say bye to Christine. Hi, Christine. How have you done? Good, 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 good. I didn't put the cinnamon on yet, but here's that. Oh, Fabulous. lovely. That's Look at beautiful. That. The colours, Christine. I do love that coral colour. That is beautiful. It is beautiful. You need to My have a look at that state with flowers mm. pads. Gorgeous, Jan. Christine, thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute joy. Oh, we've got two. Look at you. <gasps> Fabulous. <laughs> oh, I love it. Isn't that lovely? And so different with the different colours. Yep. You are a superstar, Christine. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been gorgeous spending some time with you. Take care in upstate New York and... Hopefully, I'll see you soon, my love. See you later. I'll be back on Sunday again. OK. <laughs> oh, she's back on Sunday. You'll see her. I'll be, I'll be putting up the tree. I'll be putting up the tree, drinking yes, hot too. chocolate, eating mince pies, watching rubbish Christmas TV, Hallmark Christmas films. That's what I'll be doing on Sunday. Um, look, quick recap for you. You've seen uh, Jan make that amazing box with those heritage dies. Two very different options there for you, which I love. If you would like the heritage dies, you're getting all six of these. And you can see you've got your Utile Bloom, your Festive Foliage, beautiful baubles, sparkling snowflakes. We've got our Starry Night and Holly Berries. And you've got your sheets of cardstock and your paper pad, 25% saving, platinum price 62.35 or 71.76, an excellent bargain, I have to say. I have had a wonderful time, and Jan, that has been an inspirational craft along. Thank you so much for your You're fabulous welcome. patience and teaching. Jan and I are going to be back with you for beautiful beginnings, so you'll have more of Jan's demos there. I'm very excited to see the slimline box, I have to say. So uh, whatever you're doing, enjoy the next couple of hours. Maybe have some hot buttered toast, double buttered toast with salt, sea salt flakes on. Let us know what you think. It is a taste sensation, I have to say. Until then, have a very safe and crafty day, and we'll see you back in a couple of hours. Bye. <laughs>